Alright, in my last video we learned how to find powers of complex numbers. In this video let's learn how to find roots of a complex number. So in other words, what does z to the power of 1 over n, where 1 over n is the nth root, what does this equal? Well in the last video we also learned how to apply De Moivre's theorem. So by De Moivre's theorem, if z is equal to r cis theta in polar form, then z to the power of 1 on n is equal to r to the power of 1 on n cis theta divided by n. So we could say that r to the power of 1 on n cis theta on n is the answer. Well, this is true, but this is not the only solution. So what does this mean? Because if I raise z to the 1 on n by the nth power, wouldn't I get r cis theta back? Uh, this is certainly true, but however, there are other complex numbers, let's say w, when we also raise to the power of n, that could be equal to z as well. So we say that there is no unique solution, or there are multiple solutions. And how many solutions there are actually depends on the value of n. So for instance, if we're trying to find the square root of a complex number, so for instance if we're trying to find the square root of a complex number, n is equal to 2, and there should be two roots. If we are trying to find, say, the fifth root of a complex number, then n is equal to 5, and therefore there should be 5 roots. So how do we find these roots? Well, let's go back to the argument that if complex number w is an nth root of z, then when we raise w to the nth power, we should get the complex number z. And then let's write both of these complex numbers in their polar form. So in polar form, we would have the modulus of w, cis sum angle phi, and this has been raised to the power of n, and this is equal to then the polar form of z would be equal to the modulus of z by cis of another angle theta. And I can apply De Moivre's theorem to the left hand side, so this will give me w to the power of n is equal to cis of n times phi is equal to the modulus of z by cis theta. So there are two parts to each side of the equation. And if we equate the first part, so that we say that the modulus of w to the nth power is equal to the modulus of z, then it follows that cis of n phi must also equal to cis of theta. And we can deduce further than that n times phi is equal to theta. Now here is the tricky part. Because now if I draw myself a unit circle and Z has an angle of theta. 
Well, I can go around this circle a full revolution and end up back at the same point. So n phi doesn't just equal theta. n phi is equal to theta plus 2 pi, a full revolution. But we don't just have to go around this circle once. We can go around this circle many times. So n phi is the angle theta plus zero rotations, one rotation, two rotations, three rotations. Okay, I said that the number of roots is dependent on the value of n. So there are n solutions and with k being zero as one solution then it follows that k has a maximum value of n minus 1. So therefore the angle phi is equal to the angle theta plus 2 pi times k divided by n where k can range from 0 to n minus 1. Now for the first part of the equation where the modulus of w raised to the nth power is equal to z, the solution to that is mod w is equal to mod z to the 1 on nth power. Okay, so both mod w and mod z are real numbers because they are concerned with the magnitude of the complex number, so the length of the vector. So finally, I would say the nth root of the complex number z is equal to w, which is equal to the modulus of w cis theta plus 2 pi k on n. And of course the modulus of w is equal to the modulus of z to the 1 on nth power times the cis of theta plus 2 pi k divided by n. Well I hope I haven't confused you too much in the last 8 minutes so let's do an example. Let's find the square roots of the complex number z equals 2 cis negative pi on 6. So the square root of z is equal to z to the power of a half which means n in this case is equal to 2 and therefore k has the values of 0 and 1 because k goes from 0 to a maximum of n minus 1 and 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. So we have two square roots and we've established that the formula for the roots, so which I'll call w sub k, is equal to the modulus of z to the power of 1 on n cis with angle theta plus 2 pi k on n. So the first of our square roots is going to be w1 is equal to, the modulus is equal to 2, so it will be the square root of 2 cis. The angle theta is negative pi on 6 and the first value for k is equal to 0. So 2 pi times 0. Actually, not to confuse you, I'll change this subscript to a 0 as well. So the first of our roots is w0 is equal to negative pi on 6 plus 2 pi times 0 divided by 2, which is equal to the square root of 2 cis negative pi on 12. The second of our roots, w sub 1, is going to be equal to, again, the square root of the modulus, then cis negative pi on 6 plus 2 pi times 1 divided by 2 and this is equal to the square root of 2 cis now p negative pi on 6 plus 2 pi is equal to 11 pi on 6 then divided by 2 
So I can rewrite this as 11 pi on 12. All right, let's plot these complex numbers to give us an idea of what's going on visually. So the original complex number z of 2 cis negative pi on 6 is at a distance of 2 from the origin and an angle of negative pi on 6. The first of the roots, w0, is at a distance of root 2 from the origin and it has an angle of negative pi on 12 and the second root w1 has the same distance from the origin and it's at an angle of 11 pi on 12 or I could say that uh, this angle here is pi on 12 so it is in fact 180 degrees opposed to the other root so the angle between the roots is the number of degrees in a circle so 2 pi or 360 degrees divided by the number of roots and so a circle 360 degrees divided by 2 is equal to either pi or 180 degrees. Alright, so if you have found this video useful in helping you understand how to find roots of complex numbers, please give me a thumbs up and please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more helpful tutorials to help you with your math studies. In the meantime, best of luck and I'll see you on the next video.